Greetings, welcome, namaste, Dr. Espen here. Today I want to talk about a topic that is absolutely one of my um, absolute great loves in life. And it is the number one thing that allows you to take your life and your business to the next level. It is called learning. I don't know about you, but I'm a lifelong learner. And today it's not just learning in the topic of learning, it's learning in a whole new innovative way. This is called neuroplasticity. We know now that neurons that fire together, they wire together. And if you don't know what that means, it simply means that when you repeat things, when you repeat things, and when you repeat things with a heightened, elevated emotion, with what we call head and heart coherence, and excitement or inspiration, which from its Latin derivation means to be in spirit, you can truly create new pathways in your central and your peripheral nervous system. So let me give you an example. If you wish to go on a conscious journey from the head to the heart, if you wish to go on a conscious journey into healing yourself, if you wish to go on a conscious journey into making your life magical, if you wish to fix your relationships, to go from relationships to relationships, if you wish to make more money or have more abundance in your life, if you wish to get better self-confidence, if you wish to, and so on and so forth, you can achieve it Firstly, if you believe it, and then if you have a regular practice. So let me tell you a, a really short story that I know is going to uh, allow you to see the power of your own learning potential. Um, I'm born and raised in a tiny little town called Arendelle in the south of Norway, born and raised on the other side of the world. When I was uh, 22 or something like that, I, I came to Australia and I landed in Australia in 2005. I started studying uh, my second degree at the time in, uh, at RMIT in Melbourne. And after having gone out in a place called Brunswick Street in Melbourne, uh, having a couple of beers with some friends, I jumped in the back of the, uh, of the old yellow cab. You remember the old yellow cabs before Uber and Ola and all the other companies came around? So I jumped in the back of this yellow cab and I'm not so present at the time. I'm kind of on my phone a bit, kind of listening to the radio a bit. And the, the taxi driver is an Indian gentleman. It's so funny, he's driving, he's looking at me in the mirror, he turns around, he looks at me, he looks at the mirror, he looks down, and he keeps driving, and I kind of like get this cheeky kind of a vibe from this gentleman. And I remember, uh, uh, you know, looking up once more, and he was looking at me in the mirror, and, I, and I'm pretty confident he heard me speak a Norwegian sentence before I jumped in the car. So, I asked him, I said, you know, how are you, mate? Like, how are you doing? Are you trying to converse with me? And he said, I'm great, thanks. He said, where are you from? And I said, uh, with my Norwegian accent even more so at the time, I said, I'm from Norway. And he said, oh, that's great. And he turns around, he looks in the mirror, he turns around and looks at me, he looks in the mirror, and then he smiles and he says, so hyggelig kompis, hvor i Norge kommer du fra? Which is Norwegian for, uh, that's really nice, mate, where in Norway are you from? And I went, dude, like, what? And I said, oh man, that's awesome, are you Norwegian as well? And he said, no. I'm from India. And I just remember thinking to myself, hang on, all right, he, he's a cool cat. He's memorized a couple of sentences. He's obviously driving a taxi, you know, good on him. No, that's a great effort. He continues to drive. And at the time, you've got to remember at this time, I was studying a Bachelor of Science, right? So I just learned that there's two areas of the brain. How many areas? Two areas, that's right, two areas of the brain are called Broca's area and Wernicke's area. And Broca's and Wernicke's area are the two areas of the brain that communicate to each other when it comes to learning and speaking a new language. So I just started to study this and I started to comprehend. I was so infatuated with how the, the nervous system worked and how you know we can learn new magical things because, and, and let me just put it this way, it's not just so much what we have to learn, it's what we have to unlearn. All the things, all the thoughts, patterns, indoctrinations, behaviors, emotions, and habits that no longer serve us, that so often runs on autopilot. So we'll get back to that. And so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, wow, great, you know, he's, 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 he's memorized some sentences, good on him. And I I'm, and I'm remember catching my thought of, well, you know, the brokers and the Wernicke's areas of the brain. And I'm still not too conscious about this process, but you know, I mean, I'm enjoying my ride. And then he's, he's looking at me, he's looking in the mirror, he turns around, looks at me, he looks in the mirror, and I'm like, he's gonna say something again. I said, you know, you know, tell me, like, 
you know, what, how was your day? What do you do? He goes, oh, it was great. What a, what a great day. And, and, he, and he turns around and he smiles and looks at me and he says, which means, uh, awesome brother, just uh, a question, do you speak Swedish as well? So he, now he's asking me Swedish, if I speak Swedish. And I have a lot of family in Stockholm and Sweden, so I do speak Swedish. And so I just went, whoa, like this is getting weird. This is an Indian taxi driver in Melbourne talking Norwegian and Swedish to me as a, as a Scandinavian. So obviously I was like, wow, that's awesome, dude. Uh, and I said, yeah, I said, you know, do you speak in Norwegian and Swedish? He said yes. And then suddenly he starts showing off. So then he turns to German. He starts talking to me in German. And then he, he flips over to Italian. And then he goes to Mandarin. All right. And I'm just going, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is insane. Please tell me. Now, this is a true story. And I said, please tell me. Because obviously the natural question at this point is, bro, like how many languages do you speak? And so I asked him, hey mate, how many languages do you speak? And he's kind of looking forward to the question, you know, a little chip on his shoulder, he's driving his taxi, he's having a great time, I'm in the back there super infatuated with the situation. And he turns to me, and I swear to God, he turns around, he looks at me, and he smiles, and he says, I speak 33 different languages. And at that moment, I just realized, oh, hang on, is this true? And I was asking him, and he was, you know, swapping in between different accents and languages, and this man could speak 33 different languages. Again, let me say, neurons that fire together, they wire together. And so, is there really a limit to what we can learn? And the answer is no. You see, these two parts of the brain, Broca's area and Wernicke's area, are the two particular parts of the brain that learns a new language. But there are many, many other parts to the brain, and of course, many other parts to the central and the peripheral nervous system. So, here's the story, and you might want to take a note on this. When I spoke to this gentleman and I asked him, I said, wow, tell me, how does this work? And he said, well, in the beginning, I was just driving a taxi and I was listening to different audiobooks. And when I didn't have a client, I would just repeat things. He would do what? That's right. He would repeat things. So he'd learn a sentence and he'd repeat it over and over again. And he said, I just found out over a short period of time that I was absolutely in love with learning a new language. So he was enjoying it. So now his brain is secreting oxytocin and dopamine and serotonin, happy hormones that enable him to learn even faster. So there's a little hint for you, right? And so I'm thinking to myself, wow, this man speaks 33 different languages. I said, tell me the story. He goes, well, when I'm driving, I'm listening to audiobooks and I'm just repeating what they're saying. And then a client will hop in the car and I'll try and converse, them, uh, converse with them. And in, in the beginning, I wasn't really that good, but after a period of time, I could pick up some word and pick up, pick, pick up some words, pick up some sentences. And I thought to myself, wow, that is incredible. And so the bottom line is that this man can speak 33 different languages fluently. And he said, by the time, and this is something you might want to take a note on, he said, by the time I got to the ninth or 10th language, it all just started molding together neuroplasticity. And now he said, all I need to do is to listen to a person speak a new language for about 20 minutes, and I too can speak that language. And I just went, holy moly. That is the power of our conscious and unconscious mind. That is the power of neuroplasticity. You see, to be plastic means that it can be molded. And when you understand these two parts of the brain, if we do a functional MRI scan of someone that speaks multiple different languages, such as this, this taxi driver in Melbourne, we will find that these two parts of the brain and the connections in between the two are physically thicker. They're actually structurally anatomically bigger. So what that means is that your brain and nervous system is actually growing new pathways and growing thicker pathways. So when the signal and the action potential goes from one part of the brain, maybe it's the prefrontal thinking cortex and out to the fingers, maybe it's to your heart, it can be to wherever, that action potential fires across an axon, which is the nerve, and then it goes to a dendrite, which accepts the signal, which then fires off you know, another action potential if it needs to. So what happens is that the more times that energy goes across, the more times you think a thought, the more times you feel a feeling, the more times you do an action, and please remember that your unconscious mind that is responsible for over 95% of what you do throughout the entire day 
your unconscious mind does not know the difference between a thought, an emotion, imagination, or a real situation. It is completely open to suggestion. So if you've been telling yourself a negative story, if you've been running the victim story, if you've been saying that you're not healthy, not fit, not beautiful, not worthy, not good enough, whatever, over a period of time, then your unconscious mind, your cellular structure, and also your body is signaling new genes that literally follow through on that unconscious programming. So think about that and think about also this, when you come to understand that neurons that fire together, they wire together, what you can do if you choose to do the work, and this is what we do in our Quantum Living Advanced Seminars, we go back in time and we find the greatest fear, we find the guilt, we find the shame, we find the grief, we find the anger, we find the sadness, we find the illusion, and we find the disconnection. And we literally get rid of all of these core blockages that it's stopping that's stopping you from ascending stopping you from healing stopping you from moving on a conscious journey from the head to the heart and by knowing the power of neuroplasticity by remembering the story of this incredible man that spoke 33 different languages and by the time he learned the ninth or the tenth he'd listen and then he could speak i want you to take that knowledge that gnosis with you in your understanding and, and simply ask yourself the question, what if the top is actually the bottom of my potential? What if the top and where you think that you could go is actually the bottom of what you're capable of? What if this new applied science of neuroplasticity and neurons that fire together, they wire together, could be practiced with heightened elevated emotion? Now this is what our programs do. What if we could put you into a model that's proven to stand the test of time to get rid of the ego, edging God out, the fear, the false evidence appearing real and help you step into the soul, the state of unconditional love? What if all we did was to reprogram your unconscious mind to perceive, to feel and to believe that every time your heart beat and that heart beats for you over a hundred thousand times every day what if all we did was something as simple as your knowing in the unconscious mind that every time your heart beats for you it says thank you i love you 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 what if that's all we did every time your heart beats for you it actually signals your body signals your brain signals everything within you and around you and signals the unified field of divine consciousness with the signal of thank you and the signal of I love you. What if that's all you did before you went to bed the next 10 days? Your entire life would change because now we know that the ultimate state of receivership is gratitude and all you need to do is to bring attention and intention to the incredible learning capacity that you have as a human being and your opportunity to continue to ascend your awareness. So I hope this story of the taxi driver that spoke 33 different languages has served you today. My question is, what do you need to do right now to make the rest of your life the best of your life? This is Dr. Espen saying thank you for your time. Thank you for walking this beautiful path with us. We're looking forward to seeing you at the Quantum Living events or whatever uh, we may do to cross paths in the future. Namaste.